U.S. Open. We got the golf U.S. Open coming up uh, on Thursday. The tennis U.S. Open, we got a couple of months yet. Now, you can watch Mark Droza on MLB Central weekdays at 10 a.m. Plus, MLB Network will uh, feature at least one live game every day for the month of June. So you got all that going on. And he joins us now. Mark, what's going on? How you doing, Mike? Good. What's happening? Not much. You taking a helicopter to Shinnecock? No, I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not I, I not? actually no. I actually prefer to watch golf on TV because I, I've been to a couple of the big tournaments in my life, and uh, I like going on a Thursday. I could see following a guy, if, especially if it's someone yeah. that I know. But uh, other than that, on a weekend, I like watching it on TV because I want to see all the action. So the best place you can be actually is in your living room. That actually in golf is your best seat by far. I completely agree with you. I got a good buddy, Gary Woodland, who's who plays, mm -hmm. and uh, I always I always go see the FedEx Cup when it's at East Lake, and I walk about nine holes, and then I'm like, see you later, pal. I can't do it no more. I guess Smoltz is playing in the Senior Open, huh? He made the. Uh, how about that? How about, I, I know he's great. I know he's a great golfer, but that's t that's really taking it to another level, huh? Hundred. He's been talking about this for years, Mike. A hundred and five golfers showed up. Only three qualify. He made double bogey on the second playoff hole and still got in. That's unbelievable. I mean, that's a, that, yeah, that, that's quite an achievement. Up. That is quite yeah. an achievement. And, you know, those guys, they played so much golf. Did you play golf when you were playing baseball? I did. Um, you know, coming up with the Braves, utility guy. So Smoltz, said, hey, bring your clubs on the road trips. Bobby doesn't have a problem with it, so yeah, I I snaked on so many of those those trips with with Smoltz and those guys. So you had you, Smoltz, Glavin, and Maddox, and you in a foursome. Who was going to win? <laughs> oh, I was fourth when I when I came. It was Smoltz was one. Maddox and Glavin were fighting for two. Chipper was probably. Far away three, and then I was hanging on for dear life. And and then Adam LaRoche burst on the scene, and Adam LaRoche can play himself some golf as well. So it was usually the five of us going out. Really? All right. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's amazing. Those, you know, those, those three guys together, when you think about their careers and how much time they spent together, is amazing. It really is. You may never see that again in baseball history with those guys. <laughs> you think about what those guys accomplished. And, you know, Avery hung around for a while. But you think about those three guys. I'm telling you, we may never have a pitching staff like that again in the history of baseball. I don't know. I think you might be watching something similar in Houston if they continue to roll the way they've been. Yeah, but they'll never be there Keiko... for the amount of years that those guys would have Yeah, together. you're right. They would have together no, forever, right. those guys. We'll never see that again. And, and you know what? Secretly, I know they were as competitive as all get out, but you never know it. They never showed it. They they always pulled for one another. They always wanted to outdo the next guy, and it was like kind of this friendly competition that we really fed off of as a team. All right, we're talking with DeRosa. Let's talk a little. Uh, all right, so at this juncture, has anything that you thought before the season started changed at this point? Was there a team you love that you don't like anymore or a team you didn't like that you love now? Anything changed since opening day? I mean, my, my, my sexy pick out of the National League was the Rockies. They're letting me down. But they're letting me down in a weird way because what was supposed to be the strength and Jeff Breidich, their GM, going out and getting all these bullpen pieces, I mean, they got one of the worst statistical bullpens in the game right now. So I got to think that regresses to the mean a little bit and they get a little bit better. I just – they've been a surprise for me. Um, but outside of that, I mean, the good stories have certainly been the Atlanta Braves and the, the Philadelphia Phillies. I'm interested to see come trade deadline. You know, they talk about being a year or two away from fully being ready to win a World Series. Well, I want to see what they do at the deadline because they've certainly put themselves in position to striking distance to maybe sneak a wild card. If spot. Atlanta goes and gets a pitcher and goes and gets themselves – Maybe one more veteran guy in the pen. They could they could hang on and be a very uh, a very dangerous team this year. Very dangerous, and I think that way about Philly as well. I really do. I, I think you could throw 
Arietta, Aaron Nola, and if they added a Cole Hamels or a J.A. Happ, someone like that, I think they become very dangerous in a short series. Yeah, you know, and Milwaukee quietly, and I picked them as an over this year when I did the show with Dog. Milwaukee's had a good year. You know, they they're you know they're playing well. They're thirteen games over five hundred. They've had a good season. I I don't know why I can't totally put my arms around them. I guess because every time I sit down and watch them. They're throwing a starting pitcher that kind of reminds me of a 3-4-5 back in my time, more of a, a Jeff Supon trying to nibble corners, and then their bullpen comes in and kind of dominates. Watching the game last night against the Cubs, their commentators said it's a five-inning game. It's a five-inning game. Yeah, in the postseason, I'll buy that, but you can't burn – Jeffers and hey, you can't expect this Josh Hader kid to go two plus innings every time he touches the ball and never give up a hit. And no, he was a little loose last night. Canable was a little loose, and Anthony Rizzo eventually got to them. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't. You can't do that forever. You're going to burn your team out. I mean, that's all there is to it. Exactly. I mean, it's not. It's not going to be there. How about in the American League? How about Seattle? I mean, Seattle with no Cano. It's a heck of a year to have it. And now I just heard that even when Cano comes back. Jerry Depoto has said D Gordon's still going to stick at second base, which, wow, that would be an interesting story. If he can't play in the postseason and they're rolling, I totally get it. But, man, I want to see that come to fruition when, when Cano's able to come back in August. Well, how, you gonna treat, how, do, nice you, how do you treat Cano that way, though? I, I ha- That's what I'm saying. I have no idea how you don't at least put that bat back in the lineup and help you get to the postseason. But that would be a huge message sent if they kept D. Gordon at second base. And he's played well there. But, yeah, they um, I trust them a heck of a lot more and, and their pitching. I mean, I know Marco Gonzalez, the Wade LeBlancs of the world. Right. I don't expect them to be gangbusters the entire season. But I think the depth of their roster – kind of outweighs Anaheim in 162. All right, how about uh, the American League? It's still the same teams. We know that. I mean, what's your thoughts on the Yankees and the Red Sox? Uh, My thoughts on the Yankees are, are, again, I always, you know, everyone screams they need a starting pitcher. I just find it hard to believe that there's going to be a starting pitcher walking in that door that is such an upgrade in a postseason game over a CC or a Sonny Gray when he's right or a Tanaka when he's right. I just, I just don't, I don't see it. Um, I still trust those guys. I still think their bullpen's deep enough that they can. A, a similar situation CC was dealing last year against Cleveland, and they turned it over to the bullpen a little bit earlier than I thought. But I just don't see the starting pitching out there. And Degrom's not coming to the Yankees. They're not. Tra- I mean, like, unless they're not telling not me the happening. truth. Then, unless they're not telling me the truth, they're not trading them. So they told me they weren't trading them. Exactly. Well, I, I would. Why would you? You're not going to recoup a Jacob Degrom in the trade. So unless I'm getting somebody back like that, a couple years younger, then I, I just don't see. I, I just don't see that happening. So I, I think the Yankees kind of stand pat. I'm interested to see what Brian Cashman does. Well, they'll add a pitcher, um, but they might need a pitcher to get through the division. That's the thing, you know. They might yeah, need. A, he but might he, be right. They might need a guy that they'll be able to get their hands on. You know, like a guy. You know, you could we could name guys, but they just could get a useful guy who can go six innings. You know, if you go six innings and give up three runs, you're going to win the game four out of five times for the Yankees. I agree with you. I, I totally agree with you. I just, I just don't see them them breaking the bank or, or, or for anyone that's that's currently out there and, and available. Well, they're not going to give up their kids anyway. They're not going to give up Torres, exactly. and I'm not even sure they're going to give up Andy Hall anymore. But they're not going to give up Torres for sure. Yeah, you're not giving up Torres. So where are you going to go? You're going to go to Clint Frazier. Frazier, yes. You're going go to go to Sheffield. Austin. And and I don't know if that brings you back the the somebody that's going to take the ball in game two. So you don't think the Giants would ever think of getting rid of uh, would ever trade Bumgarner, huh? I, I don't. I I, I don't. I, I I truly don't. He's met too much to that city. 
I yeah, I just I just do not see that happen, and that would be waving a white flag. And in the NL West, I mean, even San Diego's within six and a half games of that division crown right now. We're talking with Mark DeRosa. Tell me this: the Yankees are giving Sanchez a couple of days off. He has looked pretty sick at the plate over his last 50 at bats. Here's a yeah. guy who was a great. He looked like a great young breaking ball hitter in the mold of a, a you know um, Manny Ramirez. Now he dives after every breaking ball in the dirt and can and and, he, and he's getting himself out. Yeah, I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna trust the track record and just the body awareness and the talent that he possesses that he's gonna figure it out. I know he hit. Uh, Two nights ago, he hit three anemic ground balls to the left side, but his last at bat was the last out of the game. It was an absolute bullet at yep. Todd Frazier. It so was. It, if you're worried about Gary Sanchez's offense coming around, I think you're in a good spot. I think so too. I, but but what do you? Th- I mean, do you think it's just being out of just out of sync when you see him have that many bad at bats over his last forty, fifty at bats? Yeah, I, I I truly do. I just think guys slump it. it Different courses of the season. We watched Paul Paul Goldschmidt get off to such a terrible start, and now he's righted the ship. The beautiful thing about the Yankees is Gary Sanchez hasn't gotten total gotten hot at all yet this year, and they're still in first place. So when he gets going, watch out. No, and listen, they got because the bottom of the order has been tremendous. I mean, you know, Torres and Andahar. Andahar's gotten a lot of big hits. So has Torres. They've gotten a ton of big hits. Torres is a star. Andujar's the guy for me. He was a guy coming out of spring training and talking to some Yankee people. Mark, you can't throw the ball past this guy. I don't care if you throw 200 miles an hour. But he struggles with the breaking stuff, and defensively he leaves a little bit to be desired. Well, we chronicled his number. I think he's second in all of baseball in the ability to drive the slider. So if he can handle the breaking stuff and the heater – and play decent third base. I mean, Brandon Drury sitting in Triple A, going, "What the heck?" Well, <laughs> what he's the heck not too. He's not too happy now. I mean, you know, so, he he's gotten wind of the fact now. He knows he's being blocked. I mean, he knows now he's just sitting there doing nothing. Not, not only are it's it's tough when you're being blocked. It's even tougher when you're being blocked by a guy who's got super talent and who's a baby. Because then you're like. Then you're waiting for exactly, and then you're waiting for him to fail. And when you're waiting for a guy to fail, uh, that, it's usually not going to happen. You know who uh, we're talking about, Mark? Those. You know who the most underrated player though still is Betts. He gets no attention. The guy is, I mean, as good as Trout is, as good as everybody is. The MVP in the, in the American League for me is Betts. The guy's unbelievable. He's unbelievable See, every I, day. I look, I look at it a different way though. I look at it a different way because I feel like J.D. Martinez has changed the whole complexion of that lineup and allowed Mookie Betts to not feel like he has to hit 3-4 in the lineup and be a run producer. He can be that athletic leadoff, George Springer, dynamic talent at the top of the order, and J.D. Martinez is going to pick up the pieces. So as good as Mookie Betts has been this year, and you can argue he, he – could be the AL MVP at this point. I feel like JD has completely freed him up. I totally agree, but the bottom line is Betts has got a 1 2 OPS and you know he's got a 430 yeah. on base percentage. The guy's hitting 355 and he's got 17 homers. I mean, I, that's a heck of a year. That that's the whole argument of of you give the MVP to the guy with the best stats or the guy with who you think. I also think, though, that he is just an underrated, his defense, everything. I just think people never talk yeah. about him. They never mention him, and the guy is so productive. It's like almost every night in the first inning something good happens with him. You know that? And the amazing thing is, Mike, the guy came up as a second baseman and then went out to center field and dominated out there. And then, oh, we got Jackie Bradley. We need you to move to right. And he dominates right field and in Fenway. He, he is a phenomenal talent. What player, uh, like, give me a guy this year who has impressed you that maybe is off the beaten path or some, either a new player or somebody this year who's wow. coming to his own. Is there a player, like an obscure, somebody you got your eye on who's just like a different, uh, you had a different year or doing a different player this year? Uh, that's a good question. The guy that first pops into my head, just because Seattle's playing so hot right now, is and the um, AL All Star early ballots came out today. 
and he's not even in the top five at shortstop in the American League, and I get it. It's loaded. Lindor, Machado, Correa, Didi, all of them are great. But Gene Segura out in Seattle yep. hitting three forty. Yep. He's got about fifteen stolen bases, forty ribbies. I mean and, and he's been doing it very silently for a couple years now. Well, and he kind of sets yeah. the tone. I don't think he gets any he gets no run nationally. No, nothing. He gets no no attention. I mean, you know, zero attention. I mean, when I saw him in remember a couple of years ago, Milwaukee had those guys at the top of the order that all had big batting averages. He was one of those guys. He played really well he when was, he was in Milwaukee. He was one of those guys, Mike, and then Ryan Braun, if I'm not mistaken, was on the on deck circle and clipped him with his bat. Right. And caused him to go on the DL, and then he had off the field stuff. I think he lost a child, if I'm not mistaken. He dealt with a lot off right. the field, and then gets traded to Arizona, and then traded to Seattle, and he's kind of found a home there, and he's really, really been, been a really great player for them. Yeah, and they talk about a team that's got a lot of guys that no one ever talks about on that team. You know, they got guys. You yeah. know, you know, Cruz is good, but the other guy, Hanek, is another guy who puts up big numbers. <laughs> very, very. Yeah, he came over in the same trade. Yeah, the guy, he, he plays. Uh, he's Taiwan had a, Walker. Right? Yeah, and he's had a big year. That guy. That's what has to happen. I, I, I mean, if if you're going to make it in a division with the Houston Astros, which eventually I think they overtake Seattle and and win that game, uh, win that division by multiple games. Um, you got to have guys play above their pay grade, and uh, you know I know he's paid handsomely, but I don't think anyone was expecting three forty and stealing the bags, and him and D. Gordon up the middle is, is looking pretty nice right now. All right, I got to ask you the obligatory Met question. What would you do with the Mets if you're the Mets? <laughs> um, Mike, I, uh, you know I interviewed for this I job. know. You could have been managing this group right now. And I'll tell hey, you right now, I and I don't, I, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. You would have done a better job because I have not been impressed. <laughs> Listen, he doesn't have a lot to work with, but I have the, the day-to-day managing, he has left a lot to be desired. He really has. He's not been a good day-to-day manager of the team. It's, it's funny. When, when, I, when I took the interview, I honestly wouldn't have done it if I, if I didn't think that that team could win a World Series. And I know everyone says that, but you have to have certain pieces in order to do it. They have the monster in the middle of the order if they could ever get him healthy yep. in Ioannis Cespedes. They have two guys at the front end of the rotation that can absolutely right. dominate a series. They, had, but they have a, the depth of a bullpen, even though it hasn't showed up completely. They have veteran presence. They have some young kids who haven't taken – Rosario hasn't taken the steps of an Albies or a Glaber Torres yet. So I don't – I'm kind of with Sandy Alderson in – I don't see a full rebuild happening here. I don't think they're that far All away. All right, then let me stop you right here and give me two what's wrong with. What's wrong with Bruce? He has three the RBIs. Stay, he has three stay. RBIs in his last 110 at-bats. The numbers say that he can, is not handling the good fastballs anymore, which shocks me. He had 36 homers last year. Which shocks me. He was someone that we actually discussed. I mean, San- Sandy is a is a huge Jay Bruce fan. He came over there, and there was chronicled he didn't wasn't going to fit in well in New York, and he was a a kid from Texas. Hey, he had thirty. They loved him. Left. They loved him, and they never thought he'd come back because he he didn't he he was a little unhappy with the clubhouse last year, and he wound up coming back anyway. And he can't hit this year, so I don't know what's going on. The guy's got three homers. He's got fifteen RBIs. Why can't Cespedes stay healthy? I can't understand. I don't know. It's his legs. Why and can't I, we keep this I, guy in love? I don't know. And now he's back in Port St. Lucie, so who knows where if he ever comes back. But tell me this. What's, not, going, what's going on with Conforto? I knew you were going there. I'm not sending him down. I know that. What does he have to do? Go down to AAA again and hit 400? No, it's no sense I to mean, send him down. But what's going on here? I mean, I'd like to believe you got to give him a little bit of leeway because of the injury he went through. It's not something we see on a daily basis. Listen, if you're going to take two steps back and just, I don't want to say punt the season, but if you really don't feel like you have a chance at a wild card or, or the division title, then you have to let Michael Conforto hit his way out of this. 
You, Brandon Nimmo's emerged as a guy who potentially could be an everyday guy for you. Got to hit lefties better. Got to hit lefties better. You got Conforto. You got Cespedes. You got the Rosario kid. You got Frazier. And you got Bruce. I don't know what you. I don't know what you do at second base in the next year or two with with, with Cabrera getting older. Well, they got this kid McNeil. Players. They got this kid. They're moving to Triple A. McNeil is hitting three thirty three in Double A. That they hope to move him to Triple A now. Maybe he could play second base. I don't know. He's a second baseman. I, I, you know, I, maybe he could play second base. This. I would just love to spend three or four days and kind of understand the chemistry. And I know people don't want to hear that word, but understand the chemistry of, of that clubhouse. I got to get Todd Frazier on the phone and ask. Well, okay, you should you should do that. <laughs> you gotta find out what's going on. Cause we, do you, I mean, you think there's something radically wrong there. I just don't understand how guys can't stay healthy and how like they just don't seem to come together. I, I, you, you you don't go eleven and one and then be the worst team in baseball. I well, mean, guys have to be held accountable. The matches have to keep stepping forward. Like it, it's like I can't just wait on you to figure it out. I, I you've been up two, three, three and a half years. Like it's time for you to figure it out now. Well, did you it's time for you to have fastball command and and give me give me depth and the Wheeler kid as well. Well, watching Boone go from the booth to uh, first place means they're going to be looking for more guys to do the same thing. So, you know, you better get your interviewing <laughs> skills ready so that you can make the I move get... right from the booth right to the <laughs> right right to the field next year. I got to get my binder ready. That's it. You got to have your binder. You got to know about their I don't talent. Have a binder, you, you, Mike. Listen, you got you got to get a binder. You got to know you have to know the <laughs> you got to know the owners like the owners likes and dislikes. You got to know the, you know, the the kids names. You got to know the dog's name. You got to know all that stuff. Then you got to have an an opinion on each of the players and and what you think is wrong with them and then you can move right in. I'm starting to get a complex. I keep going on these interviews, and I keep getting passed over. That's okay. A couple interviews doesn't hurt. You know, <laughs> the next one might be the charm. It might be. A- you just hope it's a team that hits like the Yankees. That's all, if it is, you know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Rather than a team like the Mets where nobody gets a hit. God, they got I look at that roster, and I hear people talking in the whispers with the Grom and Syndergaard, and I look around baseball, and I'm like, man. They would have to get back such a haul for the two of those guys because, I mean, you talk about a rebuild. You trade both of those guys, you're rebuilding for years. Yeah, they. I'm telling you, they. at least what they've told me, they have no intention of trading either one. So, I mean, that's pretty much where I they are. I don't think they should. All right. Listen, good to talk to you. Uh, get the binder ready. We'll talk. <laughs> Thanks, right, Mark. Mike. Mark DeRosa, back after this. Hey, it's Evan Roberts, my 